In this video we're going to sort of fix a very common TDI oil leak because you think it's coming from the filter where in fact it isn't. Now I've just taken this car for a run up the road and got it warm and dropped the oil out and also made the childish schoolboy type error of dropping the oil filter which ricocheted round the top of the axle spread oil all over the place all over the floor uh, and made a right bloody mess. But the oil leak in question, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, probably. Let me do a really close zoom and you can see. You see the flange, you see the thermostat housing there? You see there's a flange and you can see it's wet above there. That's kind of a common place for it to leak oil. Now at the same time, I want to change the uh, oil pressure switch because that's not the right one. Um, it's, you can see the original connector there is had a jump lead put onto it because that's a screw on top one. So I've got some uh, OEM switches which are good. So all they've got to do is take off, <laughs> I'm zooming because I can't reach, take off that nut there which is uh, 7 eighths if I do believe and the two 10 millimeter headed bolts and then we'll do the rest on the bench and I've got something important to tell you. So I've got the bolts out, they were actually uh, M6 bolts with an 8mm head, I don't know what I was thinking. Too close to one time. There's the thermostat for the oil cooler. Notice it's got two big washers at this end and a big spring. And then we've got the housing here. Now, there is the offending item. The O-ring here. But it doesn't look like an O-ring, does it? Let me see if I can uh, just move this a little bit. And bring it in closer. It looks like a special triangular washer, but in fact, it's just a regular O ring ERC5913, I think it is. I'll put it in the description below. Um, obviously, you've got this great big spring pushing against the housing, and also two little clamp bolts. But what, the, what is the interesting thing about this is. These are kind of a special sort of a size. If, if you put something in that's a little bit bigger, what happens is you'll snap off the little lugs here and then this is buggered. It does look a strange thing, doesn't it? When the first time I took it out, I thought it was, I was looking for a, a special O-ring. And in fact, that's, that was the O-ring. Let's take it off. And it is absolutely rock solid. Heavy, you know, like uh, dry. Look at that. Can you see? Would you have thought it was that? It's hard to believe, isn't it? Clean it up. You don't need any sealer on it. We've already covered this uh, section testing the thermostat out on one of these items here, so there's no point doing it again. When you take these off, almost make sure make sure that the O-ring isn't still in here, you know, that goes on your oil cooler pipe. Sometimes it fall off. Just be careful of that. It has been known for them to fall off or drop into here. And then when you put the pipe in, try and screw the nut, you, then you've got two O-rings and one invariably pushes off and gets jammed down this hole here. That's not good, is it? So, there's the O-ring. That's him. And what a difference, eh? Can you see that? What a difference. So we're going to assemble that. And we're also going to change the oil pressure switch. Now, th this is uh, PRC63... H7 I do believe. I'll write it below. I've just scribbled something down. These are OEM switches. I always like the OEM switches. Uh, these cheap Chinese ones, intermotor things and stuff like this, they all seem to be problems. They either don't work properly, um, giving you a false impression that you've got very, oil, uh, very low oil pressure, or they leak out of here 
where the terminal is. I've seen that happen quite a few times. Change the switch, oil pressure lights usually go out and uh, no problem at all. It is a low pressure switch. I think the, the, I think the oil pressure for, to put the light out is only 4 psi on these. Mind you, by the time it gets to 4 psi, damage is done, isn't it? So let me get these all bolted on and I'll show you what it looks like. Mind you, there's not much really to see, is there? I took the old uh, oil pressure switch off and it's on a taper thread here. I'm not sure what thread it is, but it should be a parallel thread with a, a washer, an aluminium washer. And you can see they're totally different. I don't know what that's off. It's off some sort of European car. But um, these are the ones to fit. So we're going to pop this on because with this out of the way it makes life a lot easier. So there you are, it's all fitted. New switch on. Fortunately they didn't damage this thread. The hose for the oil cooler had the o-ring missing. So I think somebody's had this out before trying to trace the oil leak. Uh, I'll put a list of all the o-rings and the parts that you require. Uh, new mile filter on and I fill these full of oil before I put them on. Just to give this engine a fighting chance of sucking oil into the you know the crank never put these on dry always fill them up with oil I know it's messy and take your time because you think it's full at the top then it'll sink down Just it's almost well, I don't know about three quarters of a litre in there anyway that's it that should be leak free the problem with it was it was sort of dripping drips onto the axle then the axle fills up with oil and every time you drive away there's a great big puddle of oil so anyway that'll cure that I hope you like that and it's a cheap fix See ya!